week yet again. Um, so today I'm going to do a demo and I thought I would carry on from the actual colours that we use doing face but do it in something different so you can still see how the dynamic of that burnt sienna, magenta and ultramarine blue work really well for other things based on this image. Um, yeah, that's what we'll do. So I'm using this as a general reference um, and I'm going to sketch this up using a, a watercolour pencil, an ultramarine blue. So there's my palette based on just those three colours and the combinations of each pair. So with this I'll start and I'll use the paper as my white because obviously the buildings are white but then I'll start by adding in some shading with the ultramarine blue and lead in from there just to get my form. The blue is going to be all of the shadowy areas begin with I'm actually just wetting the areas that I need the, the blue paint to actually run in and settle into and not just be like formally colouring in an area. It makes a big difference if you really be specific but wet an area first, the entire area that you want to add the colour to and then as you add the colour you can actually drop in little heavier bits of pigment and just let it run and let it flow out rather than control the way all of the paint is added. So here I'm painting the shadows on the wall of the plants that I'm going to paint above. Sometimes you want more control of your shape um, when you're painting an area specific to say the shadows of plants on the wall and that's when it's a good idea to actually use the paper that's a bit drier. You can either pat the paper dry with a paper towel or you can just paint directly onto dry paper. That technique's called wet on dry and it gives you much more control over your shapes. So here I'm back up onto the damp paper but I'm being a little bit more specific about where I put my dark and my light because this is again, if you can look at the reference picture on the side, um, it's going to be covered with the, um, the planting as well. Now I'm going to start adding green, which I know wasn't in my original palette, but obviously we need greens. Um, I'm using three Derwent greens. I've got a small uh, watercolour set of Derwent colours and I've got a large set. And I really love the greens that are included in the, the sets, the, 
the um, main ones um, and I actually think these are relating to the Derwent Studio watercolour pencils and coloured pencils. I've used the Derwent pencils for about gosh 30 years now because I really really like the colour palette. I've got the 72 colours um, and I've always used them in fashion illustration and other work and I've just noticed if you see here that the colours of the pencils and the paint swatches are very similar so even though these are old and I'm sorry I don't have any new ones to quote for you but um, the teal green is called jade green number 41 um, the middle green the darker green sorry is called bottle green 43 and the light green is called grass green 47 those numbers equate to the numbers of the pencils if you just wanted to buy those three pencils or if you have them in a set Finally here I'm adding the purple that I mixed with the ultramarine blue and the magenta right in the beginning. It's a really really cool colour so it emphasises the shadows. By the way, I actually forgot to film me doing the sky, but it's actually a mix of the ultramarine blue and a little bit of phthalo blue, which is your basic primary blue, um, just added together in a wash.
next week I'm going to take little elements out of this painting and do them individually. So I hope that was helpful um, and to be creative. Have a great week. Bye.